All praise is due to Allah, the Lord of all worlds, who says in his ever glorious book, so raise for your Lord's forgiveness and a garden as wide as the heavens and earth, prepared for those who believe in Allah and his messengers. That's Allah's bounty, which he bestows on whoever he pleases. Allah's bounty is infinite. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and that our master, Prophet Muhammad, is his votary and messenger. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, his household, companions, and upon those who follow their path till the day of judgment. Through its sublime morals, Islam encourages people to work hard, endeavor, strive, have high spirit, and develop the world. Islam also prohibits laziness and corruption. This goes in conformity with the teachings of the, pre of the previous divine messages. The Almighty Allah says, He has not been told what was written in the scriptures of Moses, of Abraham, who fulfilled his duty, that no soul shall bear the burden of another, and that each person will only have what they endeavor towards, that his labor will be seen, and that in the end of, in, in the end he will be repaid in full for it. The Prophet, peace be upon him, showed the value of high spirit, saying, Allah is the most generous and he loves generosity. He loves the lofty morals and hates the base ones. Omar ibn al-Khattab said, do not be people of low spirit. I never, I never saw anything that hinders from achieving great ranks more than the low spirit does. It is said that a sign of one's perfect mind is his high spirit. Poet al-Mutanabbi said, I never saw a fault in people's characters worse than the competence losing perfection. It is noteworthy that high spirit is not limited to one area. It must be present at all acts that a person does. This includes the worship of Allah. The Sharia has encouraged us to compete in the, air, in the area of worship. As the Almighty Allah says, hurry towards your Lord's forgiveness and a garden as wide as the heavens and earth, prepared for the righteous. The Almighty Allah prom promises great reward for those who strive in their acts of worship, saying, but if anyone desires a life to come and strives after it as he should, as a true believer, his striving will be thanked. The Prophet, peace be upon him, was a person of high spirit in all of his affairs, including his worship. Allah, glory be to him, addressed him, saying, You Prophet, enfolded in your cloak, stay up through the night, all but a small part of it, half or a little less, or a little more, recite the Quran slowly and distinctly. We shall send a momentous message down to you. This was the way Prophet peace be upon him used to offer pr night prayer till his feet became swollen. When he was asked about that, he said, Should not I be a thankful slave of Allah? The Prophet peace be upon him used to encourage his companions and followers to achieve excellence and have high spirits. He once said, If you ask Allah for anything, ask him for the firdaus, for it is the last part of paradise and the highest par part of paradise. And it, at its top there is the throne of the beneficent, Allah, and from it gush forth the rivers of the paradise. Companion Rabia ibn Ka'b said, I was with the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, one night. I brought him water and what he required. He asked me, he said to me, ask anything you like. I said, I ask your company in paradise. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, or anything else besides it? I said, that's all what I need. He said, then help me to achieve this for you by devoting yourself often to prostration. Having high spirit in the worship means to perfect its performance and to be reflected on one's behaviors and morals. That means one should not lie, betray, forge, or consume others' properties. In this way, one's behaviors go in line with the goal of his worship. Thus, straightness, which is the basis of this religion, will be achieved. One of the most important spheres to have high spirit in is seeking knowledge. The Prophet, peace be upon him, commanded us to ask Allah to grant us useful knowledge that benefits all humans. 
He, peace be upon him, said, Ask Allah for beneficial knowledge and seek refuge with Allah from knowledge that's of no benefit. One of the Prophet's supplications is, O oh Allah, I seek refuge with you from knowledge that's of no benefit. Useful knowledge is the real weapon that achieves strength for nations. No country can develop without, no without knowledge, and backwards of any nation means backwards in, no in knowledge. The companions of the Prophet, peace be upon him, and their followers showed due diligence in seeking knowledge. For example, Abu Huraira had very high spirit in studying the hadith of the Prophet, peace be upon him. He said, Nothing has driven me away from studying the hadith of the Prophet, peace be upon him, even if the wedding parties of my neighbors or trade. All that I cared for is to listen for a word from the Prophet, peace be upon him. Ibn Umar said to Abu Huraira, You are the most knowledgeable among us in the hadith of the Prophet, peace be upon him. Ibn Abbas said, Whenever I learned that a man had heard a hadith directly from the Prophet, peace be upon him, and I found him taking an afternoon nap, I would place my clock against his door to shield my face from the wind until he comes out. He would say, what, what has brought you here, cousin of Allah's Messenger? I would reply, a hadith that I have learned that you heard directly from the Prophet and that I wished to hear it directly from you. He would say, why didn't you send for me to come to you? I would say, it was more right for me to come to you. Ismail ibn Yahya said, I heard a Shafi'i saying, I memorized the glorious Quran when I was seven years old, and I memorized the book of Al Muwatta when I was 10 years old. It is reported that Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal memorized one million hadith. Imam An Nawi is reported to study 12 lessons a day. Our Early scholars strove for carrying the responsibility of knowledge in all fields. They convey, conveyed its message to the people objectively, for the sake of Allah and for the benefit of all humanity. Therefore, they recorded their names and their knowledge with letters of light in the memory of history. The Almighty Allah said, The froth disappears, but what's of benefit to people stays behind. This is how Allah makes illustrations. One of the fields where man shall show God good determination is work. Since the Islamic Sharia has elevated it, the Holy Quran clearly shows that work and worship are two peers. Allah Most High says, and when the prayer has concluded, disperse within the land and seek from the bounty of Allah. And remember Allah often that you may succeed. In addition, Allah the Almighty promised those who perform their due work with good will in this world and the eternal blessing in the hereafter, saying, whoever does righteousness, whether male or female, while he is a believer, we will surely cause, cause him to live a good life and we will surely give them the rewards in the hereafter according to the best of what they used to do. The fact that work is one of the most sublime acts in this life is proved by the fact that all the prophets and messengers of Allah were workers. For example, Adam, Ibrahim, and Lut, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon them all, were farmers. Nuh was a carpenter, Idris was a tailor, Saleh was a trader, and Dawood was a black blacksmith. Allah the Almighty says, and we certainly gave David from us bounty. We said, O mountains, repeat our praises with him, and the birds as well. And we made pliable for him iron, commanding him, make full coats of mail and calculate precisely the links. And work all of you righteousness, indeed of what you do, um, see, uh, of, indeed, what you do, I am seeing. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, It is better for any one of you to carry a bundle of wood on his back and sell it than to beg of someone whether he gives him or refuses. Yet, 
mere work is not what's intended by these texts, but rather its perfection. Prophet Muhammad said, Allah loves that if one of you does a job, he perfects it. That's why the Prophet, peace be upon him, was always keen on the point that everyone should have a good deed through which he could benefit himself and others. Every Muslim has to give in charity, the Prophet said. The people ask it, oh, Allah is a prophet, if someone has nothing to give, what will he do? He said he should work with his hands and benefit himself and also give in charity from what he earns. The people further asked if he cannot find even that. He replied he should help the needy who appeal for help. For help. Then the people asked if he cannot do that. He replied then he should perform good deeds and keep away from evil deeds. And this will be regarded as charitable deeds. So, so the Prophet, peace be upon him, urged those who are unable to work to keep away from doing harm to people, showing that they will be rewarded for it, since they have protected people from evil and harm. Serving the society, supporting the weak, helping the needy, and meeting the needs of the needy are all fields whereon one should show high determination. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, The most beloved people to Allah are those who are most beneficial to people. The most beloved to be deed to Allah is to make a Muslim happy, or to remove one of his troubles, or to forgive his debts, or to feed his hunger. That I walk with a brother regarding a need is more beloved to me than that I seclude myself in this mosque in Medina for a month. Whoever swallows his anger, then Allah will conceal his faults. Whoever surpasses his rage, even though he could fulfill his anger if he wished, then Allah will secure his heart on the day of resurrection. Whoever walks with his brother regarding a need until he secures it for him, then Allah the Exalted will make his footing firm across the bridge on the day when the footings are shaken. With that said, I ask Allah for, for forgiveness for me and for you. <clears throat> all praise is due to Allah, the Lord of all worlds. I bear witness that there is no God deserving to be worshipped but, uh, but Allah, and I bear witness that Muhammad is a slave and messenger. Muslim brothers, serving our country is one of the most sublime fields wherein we should compete with each other, since it is an act of belief. In truth, Allah Most High orders us to compete in doing good, saying, So raise to all that's good. To Allah is your return altogether. And He will inform you concerning that over which you used to differ. Furthermore, one should show high determination in, bu in building countries, shouldering the social responsibility and racing to doing righteous deeds including maintaining of mosques, building schools, preparing hospitals, and treating the, pa the patient. As all of this comes under the category of sadaqah, as sadaqah al jariyah as Prophet peace be upon him said, the rewards of the good deeds that will reach a believer after his death are knowledge, which he taught and spread, a righteous son whom he leaves behind, a copy of the Quran that he leaves as a legacy, a mosque that he built, a house that he built for wayfarers, a canal that he dug, or charity that he gave during his lifetime when he was in good health. These deeds will reach him after his death. <clears throat> so it is of cardinal importance to compete with each other in serving the country that protects us and from whose provision we eat. A matter that will not be realized except with solidarity, awareness, showing mercy to each other and helping each other. other. Since it's our country, thus its progress will be realized by us all. Our will, power and determination are not less than those of others. We are the owners of a great civilization, originality and history, yet we should take into account that realizing precedence requires self-denial and breaking through hardships and difficulties.